All right then, so now we know a little bit about GSAP, let's use GSAP to animate these things in, but I want them to stagger in so they come in one at a time. So I want them all to come up from below a little bit and also to fade in this first, then this, then this, then this, okay? So there's several ways to create a staggered effect. I'm gonna use the way that the view docs recommends and that is to add a delay to each item's animation. So there's several steps to this. The first thing to do though is to add the transition group around these things right here. So we have an LI tag for each item on the page. We want to transition those in. So we change this UL to a transition group like so and we set the tag equal to a UL. Okay, so I'm gonna put these on the next line down so we can add a few hooks as well. And it looks a little neater. I'm gonna change this closing UL to the transition group as well to close that off. And then I'm also gonna add a peer to this so it fades into the screen to begin with. And then I need two hooks, the before enter to set the initial state and then the enter hook to start the animation with GSAP. So I'm gonna say before enter and set that equal to a function which I will call before enter and we'll make that in a minute. Same for enter, set that equal to a function called enter. All right, so now let's create those functions down here. So we have two, we have before enter, and we set that equal to a function where we're taking the element, remember? And this is where we set the initial state. We'll do that in a second. First of all though, let's create the other function, which is enter. So let's rename this to enter. And we take in the element and also the done function, which we call when the animation is done. We also need to return these down here before enter and enter. Okay then, so first let's set the initial state of the element. And I'm gonna do that by saying L.style and then I want to set the opacity to be zero to begin with, so it's gonna fade in. And then also L.style.transform and this is gonna be translate, if we can spell it, translate Y and it's gonna be 100 pixels. And that means 100 pixels from the bottom. Okay, so it's gonna come up from that position. All right then, so I need to first of all replace this with an equal sign. It's not CSS, it is JavaScript. That's the initial state, right? Now we want to animate to the state on the screen, which is over here. So to do that, we're gonna be using GSAP. And first of all, we need to import it. So import GSAP from GSAP like so. And then down here, we're gonna say GSAP dot two to animate to something. The first argument is the element that we're animating. And the second argument is gonna be the different properties we want to animate to. So that is gonna be an opacity of one. Also Y of zero, so it goes back to its original position. And then we're gonna say the duration is gonna be 0 0.8 seconds. And then finally, we need our oncomplete, which is the done function. All right then, so the way this works is that this is gonna run this enter function for every single li tag individually. And it's gonna perform this individually on each element we get, all right? So if we save it at the minute and take a look, it works, but they all come in together. It's not staggered at the minute. So how do we now make a stagger effect so they come in one at a time? Well, to do this, we're gonna use a delay. So come down here inside this object and add delay property. And what this does is delay the animation by a certain amount of time. Now I'm gonna say 0.2 seconds because I want each one to come in 0.2 seconds after the other one. But if I do this, it means the delay for each one of them is gonna be 0.2 seconds. And they're all gonna be delayed by the same amount of time and we still don't get that staggered effect. So what we want to do is delay maybe the first one by nothing, then the second one by 0.2, then the third one by 0.4, then the fourth one by 0.6 seconds. So they come in one after the other, that makes sense. So how do we do this? Well, we kind of need the index of the item in the list. If we have the index, we can just times this by the index. For example, this is index zero, so zero times 0.2 is zero for the delay. This one is one, so one times 0.2 is 0.2 seconds for the delay. This one two, two times 0.2 is 0.4, and then this one is three, three times 0.2 is 0.6. So if we can find a way to pass the index of the elements into this thing right here, then we can do this, and we can easily do that. So what I'm gonna do when I'm using a V4 is add the index right here, and we can do this. It's the second 
item inside parentheses. And then we can use the index of the item in a data set. So I could say data hyphen and then call this what you want. I'm going to call it index. That should be hyphen not equals. And then set it equal to this index right here. So we have to data bind to do this. And right here I can say index. Cool. So now this is going to be zero for the first one, then one, then two, then three. And we can access that from this element by using the data set property. So I could say down here L dot data set and then the name of this data set, which is index in our case, that's what we called it right here. So dot index times 0 0.2. So that's going to be zero first, then one, then two, then three. So each one is going to have a different stagger. So if we save this now, then hopefully, yep, we get a nice staggered effect. And that looks a bit better. Cool.